Good morning. I got a song here, and this is a demo that I was asked to build from scratch. It's just an acoustic track, but they wanted some electric um, ambience and vibe around it. So I'm going to do a swells track with my volume pedal. And I thought this was a good chance to talk about volume pedal swells and why they can be a little trickier <laughs> than, than you think. Um, for me, I've spent a significant amount of time learning how to play behind the beat. I have a whole video about it. You should go check that out because I think it's really valuable. It happened for me when I stopped trying to catch the beat and then play as quick as I can right after it or subdividing like I'm gonna try to play a 30 second note after the beat or whatever. That feels terrible and it's wrong. For me it happened when I was able to let go of tension everywhere in my body. I carry tension in weird places. When I'm really concentrating on something I tend to push my tongue against the roof of my mouth. And so I'll get done with a track or something. And I'm like, wow, why is my tongue sore? <laughs> that might seem really weird to you. That also might be something that you really identify with. I also will prop my left leg up uh, on my toes and just lock my calf muscle. That's not good. Or I'll lock my shoulder. Or there's some muscle in my core when I'm sitting. And I just... After a while, uh, I can feel that there's tension there. Well, recognizing all that and getting that out of the way is what's going to help you relax when you're playing with a metronome and to not anticipate the beat. And for me, um, the more I got comfortable with a tremolo, sorry, not a tremolo, a metronome, while having all this tension, like consciously, out of my body, that's when I started being able to like make things feel really good. Anybody can play any note. There's no note that I can play that nobody else has access to or that certain people don't have access to. It's where you put them. For me, and this is getting kind of philosophical, music is the organization of pitch and time, right? And so I got to be in tune and then where I put all the same notes that are available to everyone else is what makes things interesting, right? Well, learning how to play slightly behind the beat, going back to the volume pedal thing, has kind of made it harder for me to play good volume pedal swells because I have to attack beforehand. I have to attack before and then swell in with my foot on the volume pedal. And so um, I just wanted to play this track and use my volume pedal and kind of show, I don't know, just how I do it, you know? So here's my, here's my sound. Um, volume pedal full up. All the reverb you're hearing, oh sorry, all the reverb you're hearing is from the Reverberamo. This is made by Victoria Amps. It's the same thing as their Reverberado. It's just in an ammo can. Well, I thought it looked cool and I'm like, man, that looks so cool. It must sound better than the one that's in the normal <laughs> tweed amp box that they build for it. So I bought the one in the ammo can, but it's the same thing as their Reverberado. It's a... Uh, Fender style spring tank, uh, tube driven tank reverb. And then it also has the Fender brown panel uh, harmonic tremolo in it, which you're hearing a little bit of here. Just that little subtle pulse. That's super cool. I love it. I might turn that off for this pass just for the swells. And then I feel like in the chorus of the song, maybe there's a guitar that, that just plays some low chords, like not quite a baritone, but in the lower register of a normally tuned guitar. So what you're hearing, you're, you're hearing the reverb from the Reverberamo. You're also hearing a little bit of clean boost from the Son of Kong. I have it set with no EQ. Um, I do still think there's just a little bit of brilliance in the top end. It, it's, it really sweetens it and and adds this, I call it like a matchlessy kind of top end, you know, kind of sounds like a matchless amp to me, just subtly. 
Um, and then I'm going into my Analog Outfitter Sarge, straight into a Morgan cabinet in the garage. That's a 112 open back with an ET65, mic'd with a Heil PR30. Going into my Chandler TG2 preamp, straight into my Apollo Twin, and into Pro Tools. You're hearing the Pro Tools feed, and unless I'm talking while I'm playing, you're not hearing anything from any microphone on the camera or on my lapel. Um, I will mute this while I'm playing. So, here we go. One, two. Super cool. So, um, you know, a lot of swells, a lot of stuff that's not swells. I'm playing the vocal melody in my mind while I'm playing to this. They haven't sang to this yet. That's the whole point of me building this track, acoustic and electric, and I'll send it to them and they'll sing to it and it'll be really great. 
I do want to add um, a second electric that is just in the choruses, really. And I think the chorus... Right there. That there's that there chorus. So um, I do want to add... And this, I think, will be the reverber ramo tremolo. Turning the reverb down a little bit, and then I've got just a little bit of this, this harmonic tremolo swirl for this pass. And I'll stay on the same guitar because I like it. And uh, I'll just go to the bridge pickup. So, chorus. Kind of cool jumping on that. I'm gonna let it go through verse two here and we'll get in on the next chorus. Cool acoustic move. That was the bridge. I wanted to have some sort of rhythmic scene change, you know? Add a little part in there that helps change up. Boom. So, uh, on that track I didn't use a volume pedal at all, but really it, it's, it's a different headspace for me using a volume pedal. I have to... I have to strike the strings before, before I swell, right? And, I don't know, um, sometimes if you're raking slowly and you're swelling as you rake, you'll catch the tail end of the rake, and that can be cool.
It's like, what, what color are you looking for? What flavor are you looking for, you know? So, anyway, I'm going to send this track off. I'll see you guys later.